Ah, tanks. The cornerstones, the balance, the space craters, the pretty much tanky DPSs of Overwatch. Well, while there are a lot of really good tank players, and while I've said a long time that if you're on low elos focusing tanks that have really bad positioning, it does a lot of really bad mistakes, is very important. And tanks are one of the better classes to climb as av. They have a lot of impact on the match today. That is what we're talking about. We're talking about tank mistake one or a couple for each that I see when I private coach. And I talk about not just diamond players or platinum or gold or bronze players or in fact, I'm not talking about grand master players. I'm talking about grand master players that are new to teams and so on. And this is what we're going to talk about today. So with no further ado, let's begin. Let's start off with the main tank. So we'll start off with Reinhardt. And first of all, long pins. Please stop. Long pins can work for certain extents and there are situations of course where you're going to pull them off. But a lot of time, try to do short pins. This can for example be if you're defending chokes and so on, doing short pin across the choke to try to pin someone at the door. This works especially great on defense. It's a little bit more tricky on offense. And then they also said, look for stuff behind. The problem with long pins is that you're spreading yourself from the team. And imagine like this. While you are in front of your team, oh, everything is great. We have this big-ass shield, this big-ass hammer, and everybody gotta fuck off because, or else, well, you'll smack him around like it's 4th of July. However, as soon as you pin the enemy Ryan and takes him away, the enemy team, especially stuff like defense, just get to push in your, your attacking team. And there's not much they can do because they can't move past whatever off-tank and DPS spend that's coming in. You are split, and split Reinhardt is an easy kill. You will die, your team will die, and it's a big easy lose, so try to do short pins. On top of that, let's start doing shield jumps. It's incredibly easy, and it survives just shield so much easier. Jumping backwards and then putting your shield up mid-air will continue to give you momentum and you can easily kite backwards and aggress forward. You will trade HP, but it will greatly get benefited with the fact that you will survive with so much fa more shield regain, so your shield won't break that easily. And if you need to get around the corner or something, that's really great. Normally the supports will be able to outheal whatever small damage they manage to get into in between your shield jumps. Stuff like hooks and so on are very difficult to land, so don't worry too much about that. In the end, let's start doing bigger swings. This is especially something that happens in the low ears. People don't get this. Melee in Overwatch, quick melee from like Genji's and Kree's and so on, but also like Reinhardt's hammer has carryover. So you can swing through multiple enemies. So doing these larger rotations is very important, including also stuff like canceling. You swing your hammer once and then you send in a fire strike. That way your animation cancels your fire strike for that extra sweet damage, which is very important if you want to carry as Reinhardt. Next up, Monkey boy, it's time for dive. So, Winston, please, for the love of God, if you play Winston, can you please just stop doing stuff like, oh, I see the Reinhardt, he's into choke. Let's jump him. You can leap behind him and bubble him and spread him from his support so they can't heal him. That's a viable technique if you see him alone. But a lot of time, if you can walk up to them, or if you're on high ground, instead of leaping straight down on the enemy team, if you can just drop from that high ground, then you will keep your leap. So stop leaping into every single fight as you will be wasting your movement ability. You rather want to push up to the corner, Tesla can and the Reinhardt, he gives you a little bit of space, and now you can either leap to the next cover inside, or you can dive the enemy team, or you can leap back out, or you can jump behind the Ryan because you saw he was low, his off time backed off, you can jump behind and bubble him, then you can rather use your leap. The same with stop spamming bubble. Make sure that if you're going to use bubble, that you drop it when you land, okay? So you don't drop it over edges. On top of that, if you can not waste the bubble, that is super useful. So for example, if you want to leap on the high ground, if you leap so that you land with some natural cover or leap to natural cover, you won't have to land in the open, drop the bubble, and then rotate in behind cover or just see your, your shield get destroyed. That way you will have your bubble, which is one of the most important abilities in Winston because it takes ages for it to actually regain. Now, let's go over to Orisa. Orisa, the big thing that I just see that really, really, really grinds my gear is Orisa setting up so they can't kite or not kiting properly, right? Remember, when we play Orisa, it's normally a form of treehouse, or I like to call them poke comps, where we want to sh shake down the shield of the drive, we want to nuke the Winston, we want to hold them backwards, right? We have all this kiting potential. So make sure that you're positioning yourself so you actually can kite, so there's actually room and space for you to kite towards the enemy team when it comes to you playing saria now over to the off tank of the of the game when it comes to saria 
please stop wasting bubbles in the beginning of fights. Let's say that you are on attack and you see a fire and you, you your grind is pushing up, you see a their enemy team fire striking, you pop both your bubbles and that's great, you just got the bubble, but now both of your bubbles are on cooldown and when you start to engage, you won't have bubbles to save a Ryan. Blocking it in the beginning of fights when, when you will get a little bit of energy, it's not going to work in the long run. You want not to get high energy, you want to get value out of the bubble and then that will translate into high energy for you so of course yes if the fight is won and there's no you're not gonna need the the, the bubble before next team fight anyway and so before the fight has ever started you will have your bubble back cooldown sure pop the bubble and continue to build energy and sustain your energy that is fine but if you uh know that okay if i pop the bubble now we will start the fight without my bubbles and you're normally doing something wrong especially in a ryan versus ryan matchup talking about ryan versus ryan if you bursted your bubble on gave the, your bubble to your ryan and you see that him still getting pushed back what you actually can do is sorry is pop your personal bubble and rotate in front of him tanking a couple as some of the damage that way you're helping him win the front line so much easier and getting yourself some free extra energy when it comes to D.Va, what I just want to talk about is playing angles. Making sure you take these angles. If you watch, for example, uh, London Spitfire versus Philadelphia Fusion, if you notice how Poco normally positions himself on the map, he likes to take these kind of angles, take on high grounds and so on, denying the enemy team to push in. If they try to push in, he can either shoot straight down on the tanks, especially stuff like uh, Goat's Comp or a Ryan Hacking Team Composition, where they can't really do much about you on high grounds. Or you can shoot the back line, essentially boycotting the enemy team. I personally like this one right here on the map, right here on King's Row, where you position yourself up here as a D.Va player, right? You will be the blue D.Va, for example. If the enemy team now tries to run around the corner, the supports have to follow after the heal, the DPSs have to follow after the heal. And if they do that, what does that mean? That means that they will be walking straight into your shotguns, which allows you easy kill and easy pressure onto that line. But you're just standing there, you're denying so much space. So make sure that you play these angles, these uh, high grounds and so on. Try not to split, of course, and get isolated and so on. Dying as a diva is super frustrating. But try to play these angles, it's super, super important. When it comes now in the end over to Hog, it is really about doing stuff like debating hooks. So when you see a Genji melee to fake out his hook, when you melee, it looks like you're gonna toss it. And so, if you ever wanna fake your hook, just melee, it looks like you're gonna toss it. A lot of Genji's gonna panic, deflect, and then it's an easy hook. The same with Tracer, count, for example, her blinks. One, two, three, hook. It's very, very simple to look for for these um, in, in these kind of. Uh, easy way to kind of debate out stuff so your hooks become easier. Remember you want consistent hooks and that also means if you need to just hook tanks and so on, that's great. Remember that your hook is a CC ability. So Death Blossom, Moira's Core Lessons um, and other ultimates that require a charge up time. This can also go for stuff like for example Earthshed if you have the reaction time to it. All of these abilities, which are charge up times, if you can, you if you hook them, you CC, you cancel them, and that's an easy way for you to stop an ultimate and to fuck up stuff. Now, in the end, when it comes to Hammond, the big thing I have to say is stop feeding. And I know if you're not playing Hammond you, and you're feeding, you're probably playing Hammond wrong. But just remember this: that if you are just slamming on the point, just dealing a lot of damage, and yeah, you got out with 20 HP or 100 HP or 200 HP. Your 600 HP plus shield and whatever, that's a lot of pressure on your support to try to sustain you back up again. First. Second, if you just go in with no follow-up, the only thing you're doing is that you're giving them DPS ultimates and support ultimates with the damage you're dealing. So make sure that when you engage, you're engaging to harass, you're engaging so that your team can follow up. If the team fight is lost or your team, or you are so far ahead of your team because you're so much faster than everyone and you just start like hamming and slamming and doing your stuff, it's normally gonna lead to, uh, or at least a lot of time, you're not getting that much value and it really sucks when you see hamming players who go in, they slam, they roll out, they're low, your Ana heals you, and now your team is engaging. So you slam, burn your abilities, took some damage, now you're waiting to get back healed up so you can engage. Now your team is engaging, you are still waiting for cooldown, still getting sustained, still getting out. Then your team is losing the team fight, then you come in, and then you kind of split. You rather want to slam, then your team engage, and kind of look for opportunities like that. So stop just mindlessly just running around this Hammond. Look for opportunities where you actually will get value, and where your team will get value for your room. Remember, your slam build is so powerful and such a valuable ability in teamfights and so on. 
So look for that kind of stuff. Now, if you want to hire me as a private coach, it doesn't matter what role you are, if you, what rank you are, or if you play on PC, if you have a team or not, hit me up on Discord. It's 50 euros for a two-hour session. I'll link to my Twitch, my Discord, my Twitter, and all that good stuff down in that description. I hope you like this video. Like the video and subscribe if you like that kind of stuff. I love you guys very, very much. Please take care of yourselves. The pause them. And so always, my name has been Jonal. You guys keep the enemy in your crosshair.